For some reason, I thought this might happen. I've broken down. Uh, it feels like it's run out of fuel. That is really not good. Welcome to episode two of converting my 1970s Volkswagen Beetle to electric. First off, I'm going to show you around the car, show you where the electric motor is going to go, where the battery boxes and batteries are going to go. Let's start with looking in the bonnet or the hood, if you're American. So the first two Tesla modules I bought are going to fit here. We're going to build an aluminium box, a little bit better than the ones I did for the camper van. I'm going to get my friend Josh to help me MIG or TIG weld them however you weld aluminium. He's gonna teach me a little bit, but apparently it's quite a bit more complex. One's gonna fit here. This is gonna be the box with the two modules. And then I'll show you in the back where the other three modules are gonna fit. This is the back seat. Um, under here is where we're gonna store some of the electronics. I'm not sure exactly what yet, but maybe like the BMS, maybe the charger, some of the uh, fuse boxes, stuff like that. And then, behind the back seat, as you may have seen in the last video when I visited Moggy and he was showing us one of their Beetle conversions. This is where the three module battery box is gonna live in the back here. It's gonna tuck nicely in there and that will give us five battery modules. It should give us just over 25 kilowatt hours of power, which is plenty for a vehicle like this. It's a lot lighter than my van. My van has about 72 kilowatt hours, but I feel like I'm gonna get a similar amount of range out of this, which is great. So that's where the batteries are gonna go. And then, like I said in the first video, sadly, I'm gonna have to remove this combustion engine and sell it. So. I did see a few comments with people that might actually be interested to buy it from me. If you are genuinely interested, maybe DM me on Instagram. That's probably the best way to get hold of me and we can chat, give me an offer. Anyway, I'm gonna have to drop this out. I don't know how to do that. I'm sure it's not gonna be super complex, but I'm gonna drop this engine out and then the electric motor and some of the other controller chargers and stuff will be in the back. So there's quite a lot to do. It's gonna be quite the adventure and hopefully I'm gonna go into a bit more detail this time round and talk you through every little step of how I'm doing this conversion and hopefully inspire some of you to revive some of your older vintage cars and breathe them back to life with electric motors. So first things first, I need to source the five Tesla Model S batteries. I had a few options with what kind of batteries to power the Beetle with, but these are the same that I used in the Volkswagen camper van and I found a really good deal on Facebook Marketplace. So I'm gonna pick up my dad with his multimeter so he can check the voltage on the batteries and see if they're any good. And then hopefully we'll pick them up today and then we'll have our batteries sorted. And then we can measure up and start building the battery boxes. And I got some really good diagrams from the EV West website. They provided all of the kit that I use for my camper van in California. And they also have done Beetles and they sell conversion kits in the US. So I'll link them below. I've picked up my dad and we're gonna go and check out these Tesla batteries that I found on Facebook Marketplace. Got a kit or some of it. Got a multimeter to see if the voltage is all good. Um, if these are good batteries, this is a really good deal. Uh, he's selling them for 550 each. I need five of them. So let's go and check them out. So you need to put it on the tops of the, the top. Yeah, bits, right? those bits, yeah. Sometimes you don't get as much contact. 19.7. Because... Interesting. You were saying these were given a bit of juice. So... It, what, what's a good charger to charge these up if we weren't... Because I'm going to put them um, in the vehicle, but then... So what you want to do, you want to put the BMS on them before you actually charge them. I Can't think you measure each you, part you, you of the You can actually somehow measure group. each group, cell group, yeah. I think you have to put it on one cell and then the, the panel, the back panel. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty happy. There was some mild corrosion, but it ended up 
uh, saving me a ton of money and I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, he said it was just because they were being stored in a kind of a damp area. So I've just transferred the money. I'm going to load up now in the car and hopefully we're getting back home safe and sound. I think we can slide to... It's quite exciting because it's like one of those steps towards it actually happening. Okay, batteries collected. I've got them back at my house in my car. I think this is the safest place to keep them until I install them because I don't want them to get any damp or moisture because they've already got a tiny bit of surface corrosion. So I think keeping them in the garage, if it rains again, they could be, could be a bit humid or whatever. So I think they're safe in here for the meantime. I also am gonna bring them over to my friend Barnaby and get them checked out, maybe charged up a little bit. And he has also got a few options for the electric motor I wanna put in the Beetle. One of which is the Hyper 9, which I use in the camper van. And there's another motor, which is gonna be less powerful, but it's a second-hand motor that he might be able to sell to me at a lower cost. And I am trying to do this on a bit of a budget. So we'll see if that's a viable option. Lovely. It puts a smile on my face driving this around. I was just thinking though, it is crazy that this car was manufactured the decade before I was born. So it doesn't feel like that long ago. I mean, I guess it's 50 years, but I cannot believe how much we've advanced in technology in the last 50 years. It just feels like I'm driving around like an ancient piece of technology. I think especially comparing it to driving around our new electric Peugeot, it just feels from another era. And I think that although there's something beautiful and visceral about driving an old car around, putting an electric motor in an old car, you don't lose that feeling. It's still very raw and feels completely different from driving around a new vehicle. But then you're also getting the benefits of driving electric, the speed, the power, being better for the environment. Yeah, I did see a few comments with people that feel like putting electric motors in the classic cars kind of ruins them. But I really don't think that's the case. Honestly. Something else that's pretty good news. I've been blasting some tracks on the sound system that the guy before me installed in the Beetle. And it's a pretty good sound system. It just needs the addition of a, a sub, which I need to find a space for. But you know how much I like listening to music in vehicles and uh, this is gonna be great for blasting tunes in the summer, cruising around, it's so good. Right, we are arriving. I've arrived here at Electric Car Converts. My friend Barnaby. Hello. We met, uh, well, we met a couple of times, but we recently met at a fully charged show. I have um, arrived to get some help checking the batteries out, checking out this kit that I might buy. Yeah, just making some plans. So I'm just checking the individual the cell groups, right? The cell groups. There's 444 cells. Yeah. And if we check each one individually, we'll be We haven't got a BMS set up yet, but I just want to check the, uh, yeah, the batteries are right. So we check one side, two, four, six, and then you've got cell one, that we're hoping it's exactly half, so of 6.3. So we've got three volts in cell one, one group. Six is one plus two. Yeah, yeah. Nine is one plus two plus three. So we need to work out the differences. Cool. But my concern is 3.2 is at the, that's yeah, fully discharged. I think that's why they were, they were trying to charge them up a bit. So they didn't want to leave them you, you don't want to store them really low. Exactly. You want to store them at like 80. Once we confirmed the batteries were okay, Barnaby showed me the kit he was happy to sell me, which included an HPEVS motor, a Curtis motor controller, a 6.6 .6 kilowatt Elcon charger, a DC to DC converter, contactors, a water pump, a throttle, a charge port, fuses, HV cabling, and a motor display. All right, we're having a quick look in the charger. Your AC, right? House. 
Mm -hmm. Three cables for 13 amp socket, basically. That's what they are. This machine, all it does is take AC and spit out DC. What is this battery box for? One of the Range Rovers? So this is going into a Series 2A Land Rover and seven Tesla modules. So we're running the Hyper 9 HV, same as you had. Yeah just with seven in series, but we couldn't quite fit seven in a line, so we've had to pop one on the top, which is why this box is a funny shape. But you've basically got minus plug mm -hmm. there, which is going to the pack negative, negative to positive, negative to positive, all in series, until you get to the pack positive here, Mm -hmm. which is another plug. So between there and there will be about 140-ish volts. But what I was saying to you is I don't have the contactor circuit in here because it won't fit. So that's why I run a plus and a minus mm -hmm. out of the box to the contactor circuit. Yeah. And that means that all my low voltage wiring is in one place. Okay. All right, let's carry this back out. <laughs> Make sure my tripod doesn't hit the terminals together. <laughs> Got a lot of weight in that beetle. Yeah. All right, we've made some decisions. We've made some good plans. Before I head off, uh, Barnaby's going to take me out in their newly converted Range Rover. This thing is probably one of the fastest classics in the world. It's running a Tesla Model 3 motor, which you can hear under there somewhere. Yeah. Straight to drive shafts. <laughs> oh, the power of EVs are just mental. Especially the old cars, like when we were over in Wales and Moggy as well. It's just like, it doesn't compute. Like, it's so unexpected, you know? So this one is interesting because it's a fairly modern car by our standards, right? Yeah, so is it's it 90s? 90, 92 or something. Okay. So you still have... It's not like a classic vintage like car. Loads of heating. Yeah. Which is now running off the HV. So yeah. this, this is the like hair dryer we were talking about. Yeah. It still has, you know, the mod cons, the lights, mm. the, it will have a new radio obviously put in there. But it's got power steering, it's got ABS, it's got all that kind of stuff. But you can do this. Woo! You couldn't do it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. even close, because it had a two and a half litre diesel, which was rubbish. In what Range Rover can you spin the wheels? Yeah. <laughs> That's scary. I love it, everything just like rattled out of place. Yeah, it's not funny. <laughs> We're having a quick look to see how easy is it going to be to drop the engine out. I need to get myself one of those. Oh, yeah. These are amazing, these ones. Can't get to them. Yeah, everything out. Oh, yeah. All so I took my. Warranty. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. Where are the... It's on the rear, so it's... Um, you're bolted up on the rear here, onto the frame. Yeah. Get the other two from the top. Yeah, you got two down the bottom, two up the top, but you'll get... Thanks a lot. Okay. So... Very interesting visit with Barnaby. There's an interesting decision we have to make. I'm gonna go with the secondhand motor he's selling me, but it looks like either we go with the controller he has, which we can only run at 60 volts, so it's gonna be quite low powered. He said it probably will just feel similar to driving at the moment in terms of the horsepower and all of that. Or we might be able to upgrade the controller which could be a couple of grand max maybe a grand it would mean we could stick with the five batteries and get a lot more power but if we go with the existing setup i have to get a six battery because of uh, how we need to figure out the voltage that's running to the motor so it would be uh, each of the batteries is like 20 volts so it'd be uh, three in series and then uh, double that up as parallel to 60 volts. But if we were to get a better controller, we could run it at five in series at 120 and that would give us a lot more power and it would mean 
sticking with the original battery box design that I've got and it would save a lot of hassle. So those are the two routes right now. It, one route is I need to get an, another battery and redesign the battery box. The other route is I have to spend a bit more money and get a new controller and, and still go with the uh, second hand motor that he's got. So I'm not going to go with a Hyper 9 as originally planned. Uh, it's going to save a lot of money. What I thought would be quite cool with this series as I'm going is give you a breakdown of what I'm spending and show you kind of the budget I'm setting for myself. I'm trying to do a much more budget build on this just because uh, I thought it'd be fun and it feels a bit more accessible for other people. So yeah, that's where we're at. Right, I'm gonna head back home. At the moment, I can only really duck out of the house for a couple of hours at a time because of Neo and uh, Raya's heading out this afternoon. So I'm on, uh, on duty to look after him. Right, let's head back. For some reason, I thought this might happen. I've broken down. Uh, it feels like it's run out of fuel. Luckily, I'm only two minutes away from the workshop, but uh, let me let me ring Barnaby and. So annoying. Hey, mate. Uh -huh. I just turned out of the workshop and I've broken down and I don't know, it seems like I've just run out of petrol, but it shows I've got a quarter of a tank still. I don't know if someone can nip down and give me a hand. Yeah, I'll send Ryan. I'm just, um, he can, he can fix yeah, cheers. I just, I just turned, I went right and then turned left and then I'm on that road. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. ping you my, I'll ping you my location. You've got to expect some drama. I also think for me, this highlights again that vintage cars are so unreliable. They're so prone to breaking down. I've literally drove 25 miles from Hove to here. It's kind of hilarious. Another reason why I think converting classic cars to electric is the way. So much more reliable. As long as you remember to charge them. All the power just cut. And, I, and it just felt like the fuel had run out. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Engage, could be completely knackered on that. Yeah, I've had cars before like that where it shows quarter of a tank and there's nothing. I guess that's the first thing to try anyway. Cheers, mate. Yeah. I think either way, getting this motor out here would be yeah. good. Annoying. Literally only driven it 25 miles to get here. Unless something was knocked when we jacked it up. No. No. We're not getting fuel to it. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, there you go. What? Yeah. You've blown a pipe off. Yes, so you've blown. Yeah, you've blown something back up in there. Drag it back up there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, big fuel leak. Huge fuel leak. That is really not good. Okay, I managed to get the Beetle towed back to the house. 
It was just a cracked fuel line which caused all the fuel to go everywhere and although I could get it repaired and continue driving the Beetle until it's ready to get converted, I think realistically that was its last drive with the original engine. It's kind of pushing me now to just bite the bullet, drop the engine out and start this. I am just collecting the final few pieces and starting on some other stuff though and like I said earlier I want to give you a bit of a breakdown of what I've spent so far, what I'm hoping to spend, and uh, yeah, we'll just see how it all works out. Now, I spent a long time hunting on eBay and calling different resellers of the Curtis controller that I needed, and uh, it was a nightmare. They were sold out everywhere, they're not in stock anywhere. So I found this Curtis controller from Holland, and annoyingly, I had to spend 500 pounds importing it into the UK. But, you know, that's just part of the game, innit? So, I've got all my amounts here that I've spent so far. I've spent £2,750 on the Tesla batteries. I've spent £2,126.20p on the Curtis controller, the new one. I've spent £465.63p on the aluminium sheets I'm gonna use for welding all the battery boxes together. And Barnaby's asking for £4,800 for all of that gear. He showed me the whole kit, which I haven't paid him yet. Um, we just need to negotiate now with the other controller that I'm not going to be using. Does he want to hang on to that and resell that separately? Or is that a lot of faff for him? So I'm going to see if he'll knock some money off for that amount. So I haven't spent that yet. That means so far, money I've actually spent is 5,341 pounds and 83p. There are a few extra bits I'm gonna need, but I can go into that in a future episode. But for now, I'm waiting on the controller to arrive. I'm gonna be heading over soon to work on the battery boxes, building those. And I need to get the Beetle into my workshop and drop the engine out. And on that note, in my next episode, I am gonna be getting my garage my workshop ready to do this whole conversion. It needs quite a lot of work. It's very basic at the moment, but I've got some incredibly exciting plans to get it all kitted out, all of my tools mounted on the walls. There's gonna be a full transformation, so get ready for that in the next video. And if you're enjoying this series, please subscribe to my channel and also go and check out Barnaby's channel, Electric Car Converts, I'll link it below. He's just started, needs some encouragement. Uh, making some great videos and all the conversions he's doing. So yeah, go and check that out and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.